Artisan Sound Channel. Now in this particular video, I'm going to show you an editing tip inside QLab. In this particular case, and you can generalize that easily, what we want to do here is we have a music queue. I have selected this music queue here, and I'm down here in the tab that says Time and Loops. So here I can see the waveform for the entire queue as it is. And in this particular case, what we want to do is we want to create, we want to set this up so that this bit right here at the end is a separate manual start. So rather than timing this out here, there is more dialogue that needs to fit into this gap. And rather than just stretching this gap and making it subject to um, the actors kind of timing it out and figuring out exactly how long their uh, their dialogue needs to need to go or how fast and slow it needs to go we're just going to create a separate manual start right here so that um, the QLab operator can start the music again when they're ready to con when they're ready when they're finished with the dialogue and ready to continue to sing so what you want to do in this particular case let's look at first uh, at how the general organization is because this queue already has multiple parts and you can see I've organized each of the parts in its own uh, subgroup like this. And so what I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to set up a separate group. I'm going to click Apple zero for that. That creates a new group. I'm going to want to make sure that the mode of this group is set to timeline start all children simultaneously. I have set this up as my default when I create a group. Um, but so this is now an empty group and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this audio cue here and I'm going to copy it so I'm going to hit Apple C and then I'm going to select this empty group that I created here I'm going to hit command V now this looks like it did what it's supposed to do but it actually didn't quite because this n copy of this audio cue is now located after this empty group rather than inside of it. So now in order to move it into it, we're just going to have to click it and drag it into the group. So you can see now it's inside the group. And then we're just going to for now name this group 18.1B uh, and the page number here is, I'm not quite sure now, may not be 70 it might be 71 so we'll just have to see but we'll, we're going to fix some of these uh, issues here or things that happen in the meantime uh, let's actually see this this unmute here might affect what we're doing so let's double check what, where we are here we are at 120 in the queue so it means this thing right here is actually going to happen right before the sec that second bit is going to trigger. But let's let's organize that. Well, we should organize it right now because it makes it makes a difference. These these run times are going to change. All right. So let's start by. I'm going to show you first how to edit the second copy of uh, this uh, queue that we made. How to make that happen so that it actually starts right there. And that's very simple. You just want to grab this uh, triangle here at the very beginning of the track and drag this over all the way to where you want this cue to start. So right here is where we want the new incoming cue to start. You're going to have to hit this. Oh, this is slightly off screen. There's a little plus button down here that makes it larger and so you can zoom in. So you really capture exactly the beginning here because if you put empty space here that's much harder to trigger this exactly when it needs to be triggered so you want to zoom in here and and edit this right to the beginning of the of the waveform and now we're good with this so now if i play this here this cue see that starts now right here where this music comes back in all right so this is what we want and now so this happens exactly at 120 of this queue, but the problem is we're probably going to want this here to happen at the tail end of this. So we have to see if this happens at the end 
of this one or at the beginning of the other one. So the way that we fix this up so that it stops playing after this piece of music here is that just kind of the opposite of what we did on the other side. And that is we're going to gr grab this arrow that's at the end of the track and drag this just before this one. And we, again, we zoom in and then go back here and make sure that we kind of cut this off just before this one, but without cutting off any of the ring out of this one here. So if you play this, sorry, this didn't play from here. No, let's see. There's a long ring out, but it, it's we've kept it all of the ring out in here. Okay, so we're happy with this. So now I think that this particular thing is actually going to happen. See, it's supposed to happen at 120 of this one. And um, so that's right here. So I think we can actually keep that in here and it'll be fine. Uh, we may have to see if they are actually not involved in the dialogue, then we may actually move this thing to the beginning of the new queue. That's possible. But my impression right now is that it, we're better off keeping it at the end of this one. So I'm going to leave it at the end of this one for now. But now this one here is supposed to have happened at the very end of the whole queue, which is now no longer on this side but rather it is now here. So this cue we're going to move over here and we're going to have to change the timing because this snippet here is now only 16 seconds long. So this is where it gets a little bit incom inconvenient in, in QLab is that because of the start time is now not at the beginning of the song, now this timing that we read here from the timeline is no longer reliable. So now the end of the song here at 133 that's still kind of this number but if i click on 133 here now i can read a number here that is the actual time inside this this queue which means that's 12 seconds from right here when this queue starts to the end that's just exactly 12 seconds so i'm going to change this 133 to 12 seconds and now i'm pretty much uh, conformed as we call this conforming or reconforming a queue uh, or you know a, an event that happens during um, during a queue that is playing it's time to the music so we have to you know since we've we've moved the way that this time reference now plays to the beginning of this uh, audio here so we have to just you know change it the way I showed you all right so I hope this is helpful and not too confusing but this is generally how it works so now we're going to play this cue and it's going to stop right here. That's how this cue is going to stop. Now they're going to put all the dialogue in there and everything, do everything they need to do. And the cue is then automatically going to forward to this location and you're ready to hit go again when they're starting to sing. So they actually have three pickup notes there and it's Braxton and Joe are singing. So in this case, yeah, we do have to have Braxton, Braxton open. Um, so Braxton is, is good here. But we may need to tweak this. I, I'm under the, I, I'm, I have a feeling that we need to move this a little bit around. So um, we, we'll see. Okay, we'll work on that. We'll work that out. But generally speaking, the audio mechanics are now set up so that the cue stops here. Then you put the dialogue in here. Then when they're ready to start singing again, you fire up the next cue and that's, that plays this sh short snippet that is the, at the very ending of the entire cue. All right, so this is set up this way and we're going to see how we deal with that um, in the rehearsal. All right, so if you find this type of video helpful, uh, just give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more of this, I will put this in its own separate playlist so that we can, can kind of keep uh, QLab tips and uh, little things that we can use inside QLab uh, in its own playlist so we can use that separately. And this is Thomas Barkley signing off for the Artisan Sound Channel.